Okay, we're on video number three of the training, and uh, when last we left off, we had just added these elements here to the fields, and they don't look anything like what I'd put over here, but I just want to show you a different way of, of doing this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over my layers here. I'm going to show you, I'm just going to delete, and you can, you can do these deletes and stuff the same way you could anything else in Windows. You can hit the shift key to do a group of them together. You can do the uh, control key to, to pick individual ones, but whatever you do, you could then um, you can right click and you can copy them onto another sheet. You can lock them so they can't be uh, can't be touched and, and deleted. You can delete them, you can duplicate them, which we, you've seen duplicate before. Um, in this particular case, we're going to delete these. And those tables now go away. I want to rep want to re replicate these items over here. So the first thing you need to do is I set up uh, three picture frames. Pretty maids all in a row. They are two by two picture frames. So as long as, again, as long as that tool is active, you can continue to make as many picture frames as you need. And you'll notice they pop up here, and they always pop up. They, the most recently created thing comes in here. So it's literally the last one is the first one up. So these are not in the right order. I'm going to move them into the right order. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a second. So we start with picture frame one. We click on it. It is now highlighted. And once it's highlighted, we can go up here to replace image. And again, you've got to download or create these images on your own. Um, as you uh, as you come across them. So some of the work obviously is going to be uh, up to you to make sure that you have that work done in advance. So there's one. Then I can go to this. And notice it then embeds the picture inside the frame. So if you want to change that image, you would just go here and you could delete it um, without having to delete the picture frame. Or you can choose the picture frame um, as an item and replace image. And if it, there's a, usually if it's an image that's big, there's a slider bar that allows you to increase or decrease the size. You can also increase or decrease the size here by changing the scale. I never touch the DPIs. If you change the percentage, it changes it all the way around since it's a perfect square. If you make it a rectangle, it will make the scale like maybe 17% and 31%. So when you change this to 15, maybe this goes to 30. So just you can play around with it depending on the size of the frame that you want. I'm going to go to the second picture frame. I'm going to replace the image. Um, they say replace image instead of insert image. Um, I'm not sure why that is. Um, actually, this has shown me that this picture frame that's highlighted is actually the third frame. I don't want it to be the third frame. I want... Yeah, I want the middle frame, this frame here, to be in between. So when I click them, it's one, two, three, and you'll see why in a second. So we're going to replace the image, and this one was the glove image. And you'll note that the image is much bigger than the, it's, it's too big, and that this one's a little smaller. That's where you can go into the image itself, or the picture frame itself, and choose uh, to go, I'm going to do, oh, let's say 12%. So I type in a 12, and I'll hit tab, and you'll notice it changes it to 12, and the size then changes if you click over here, and that looks about the same size. Again, normally you would have this as, these as assets that you just drag them in and drop them, but I didn't do that in advance of this. So, And then the final picture frame is the calendar picture frame. Uh, I chose that calendar because the experience is really based on time of service. You could use an hourglass or anything that, that would, would tell you what that means. Again, this is a little too big. We're going to go 12% and that gets us right where we want. Now these all have 
these frames all have uh, borders on them. They come that way. So you have to then go in and I, this is, um, I'm able to go in and say there's a stroke here. It's black. I want to set it to transparent. And once I've done that, because I highlighted all of them together, it makes the same change for all of them and they're ready to go. So now I need a table. Because again, when you're dealing with these sorts of things and you're dealing with attributes, you want to do a table because it's going to be easier for you to adjust. Drag it down. And it's two uh, rows. You're going to insert a row. And then again, highlight the entire thing just like you would in, in rows in Excel. And then use this to drag to a height of four because these two by two squares are actually four by four millimeters. So you have that. And then we can go in here and again back over to the table, stroke and fill. Stroke automatically is, is black just because it assumes you want the, 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 uh, the grid lines on the table. I've switched it to transparent. And for whatever reason, it decided not to do that. And that's because I forgot to click the All button. And now we're good to go. So now I can go back into table mode and say active, semi-active. I can say gold. And I can say, well, we'll say these, these nothing. In terms of experience, so highlight those. We go over here to the font. And we change it to condensed. And we drop the font down to eight point because that's the that's the font size we have here earlier. And you prove that I go in the table and right there and it shows me that that's eight point. So I've keep I've kept the size of the of them the same. I I may if I wanted to I could take this line which they call them curves in in the system in the system. Either one doesn't matter. They're out of order, so I'm going to just take this one and drag it up like that. So they're, all the card elements are now in order. I'm going to take this last one. I'm going to do a duplicate, which places it and you get, places it right there. So, right, so then I'm going to click on the last one and drag that right down there. It's a little close, um, a little too close, but just bear with me here. So that's how you would do that. And you would do the same thing for, for over here on this. It's a text box, and these are all text boxes. For fictional cards, which is what I do, I don't put this information in here because it, it's, it's not important. However, if you create fictional cards and you reverse engineer the cards using the how-to guide, you can come up with what the expected average home runs and RBIs are for a card based on 162 games. And you could put that in there and that'd be at least be a guide to you as to how you might want to set your lineups and, and etc. I'm not going to add those to this card, but you could. Um, other things you could do, um, you could, um, let's just do this for fun. Um, we have this footer group, which is, and you'll notice I said it's, it's the footer group is all of these things together. You could take the team logo and move it out of the group. And by doing that, that would allow you to take this logo using the Move tool and put it over here. That would allow you to take this item and extend it across. And now you have a totally different look to the card, a totally different feel and a totally different vibe to the card. You could also, if you wanted to, take this shape and up here there's a little handle. You could rotate it around. You could drag it down here into this corner, line it up, 
probably nudge it just a slight bit there, right there to the grid, and do this. And all of a sudden, totally different look of the card. Now that would mean that this table would have to be changed in, in, and slimmed down, so let's duplicate this by going to the item here, and we'll right click and duplicate, and pick it, we'll move it over here, and we're going to have to squinch it down, so we literally have to move it over inside the lines. That might mean that for some of these uh, ratings, for example, if I go into champion, I have to go into table mode to edit. If, I need, if he's a semi-champion, um, that's just barely going to fit. And so it'll squinch the card down a little bit. Um, you could, again, we could replicate this or duplicate it. Pick it. Click it. And, uh, oh, I was in table mode, that's why I won't do that. I had to go to move mode. Move. Let's do this the right way. In move mode, take the whole thing, throw it down in the corner here. Now let's get it right down in the corner. Right down in the corner. Thank you very much. And I would. I have to pick the picture. The picture is a little off center here, and that's because of, of of dumb stuff that I did. So up here you can do undo transform, and just keep undoing one step at a time until you get back to what you thought you were doing. Okay, and I undid the duplicate. So now I want to. I went all the way back and undid it. So I'm not sure where I went wrong. Let's try this again. So we'll duplicate. We'll choose it using the move tool. We will then drag this down into the far corner of the card and drop it. And we may not need to put any of this about the Cleveland Thunder. If you know that's the logo and you know those are the colors, that's a fairly simple, clean card. Let's say that you wanted to edit the player name. So you go to the text tool, you come over here, and you have to choose um, to choose the text box. And that means you have to choose this here. We're going to do this and we're going to say we're going to say that Mike Schmidt plays for the Cleveland team. And because we have this nice little box, we're going to do another picture frame. And we're going to do a nice little picture frame. Oh, let's say about that big. And now we're going to go and replace the image. And look at that. Might be a little big for the thing, but I'm going to leave it at, as is because it looks more like a baseball card that way. Um, you could extend the image. You could actually choose that image. And i got to find it. There's the picture frame. I could extend it out. I extend it up, and I can move it over with the Move tool, center it more in the middle of the card. I can bring it down here and do just about there, and then if I take the, the logo here at the bottom and drag it I gotta find the picture of Schmitty and, and drag this logo up here. 
and drop it in front. Now I've got a little overlay that, that makes that look nice. So that's how you do some of the, the programming uh, and moving things around to get things the way you want to. A couple of questions that have popped up have been about text boxes and turning them on their side. It's real easy. Create a text box. And then take the handle at the top, turn it. You can turn it upside down if you want. So if you're doing two-sided cards, like fact cards, where this half of the card is up one way and this half is the other, you can do that. You can turn it on an angle. And then once you have it where you want it, you can then size it the way you like. To get it to look to fit the space you need. And then again using the move tool, let's move it around. Put it where you want. Keeping in mind if you overlap the images, you have to make sure that one image is in front of the other. So that's one of the things that you can do. Here's the other thing that you can do. We're gonna go over here and I'm gonna come up with a I'm going to go over to Pages, and I'm going to show you how to add a page, and then we're going to do a grid line. So I'm going to do, we right-click the page, we add a page, and we insert before or after. I'm just going to say after, um, and say OK. It automatically populates the grid and the margins that you had previously. And the only thing you have to do then is, on the View menu, you have to do two things. You have to go to the Guides Manager, and once again, set up your guides as 6 by 3 with zero gutter. Um, what I discovered is the margins have to equal 15.5 centimeters. So you want to go 8 left and 7.5, and I'll show you why that's important in a second. I'm going to close it. And then you have to go to the grid manager and change the grid, basic grid, to four millimeter space. Uh, sorry, two millimeter spacing. And the reason that you have to do eight and seven and a half, again, control equal sign gets this expanded to be able to view. Because the grid starts from the left page and goes four centimeters across, all the way across, in order to have this be a, a true piece of graph paper, you have to make sure that this is 8 millimeters so that the first line is right on the grid line and then all the others follow. You don't care how much space you don't have here because this is going to get cut off. So now it's time to say how do we make a grid and to zoom out it's control minus. People say hey but this is what I see but it won't print. How do I get, uh, how do I get a grid to print on here? You kind of had the tools to do it before. I showed it to you. We're going to do it now. Um, we do the pen tool. We choose the line mode, and we want our, our uh, stroke to be 0.5. Not 5, 0.5. Once you do that, the stroke then becomes black. And here's what you do. You then take the pen tool, and starting right at the top there, you I messed that up. So we'll go undo create. There we go. Line tool, go to the top here. Notice that, that, see how that green line there is? See the green and the red? It's telling me that I've got it to the right edge of the page and I'm on that line. That's one. If I go over to my layers for this page, it's a curve. Now I can duplicate that curve. And now using just the move tool, I can Move it there. I can duplicate again. And the next one. I can duplicate that again. You get where I'm going with this, right? Takes a little time, a little patience, but you're in in good shape once you do this and you don't have to do this every single time because I'm going to show you 
what you can do to make sure that you only ever have to do this once, at least if you're using 44 by 72 cards. Now I notice Keith's official size is 70, 42 by 72. Um, the card holders I have will hold a 44 by 72 card, so that's what I used um, for one. And I measured a card once just to be sure. And I think what happened is I, I, I might have measured one that was a little big. Uh, might have been one at the edge of a page. So those are my lines across. And now I need to go to back to my pen tool. Everything's already set from the last time I used it. And just go right here. Notice the green line tells me I'm right on the margin. And I go till the green line pops up again. Or it's actually going to be the red line there. I then take that curve. And that's not the right curve. It's this one. I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to double check it to make sure, yeah, you want it one that lines up across the side. And I'm going to drag that down. Brian, that's genius. Ah, uh, that's, that's, the, now you can't see it. You can't see it. That's okay. Because here's what we do. Hit the first one, hit shift, hit the last one. See that little button there? It says group. Make it a group. Click on here. Call it grid lines. And then in our assets section that we started over here, because this is already highlighted, we go to the assets section and say add from selection. And you don't see it because it's in black. Let's see, it says grid lines. Let's go back one page right there. Let's um, hmm. guides manager. Oh, remove all guides. I'm going to remove the guides. It's not letting me do it. But anyway, got that. I click on this, and I drag it over. And you'll notice the lines are very light. But remember, it's a, a 0.5 line, just enough that's going to print. And I just drop it right on the grid. And I'm a little off, because you can see the blue is outside the box line. So we're just keep tweaking right. There's where we are, and we're good. So the grids are now on there. I believe I can do a preview mode. And there you go. When I preview it, you can see those light lines, and those will be what print on the screen, on the piece of paper, and you're done. So hopefully these three videos have gotten you to where you can do some basic stuff. Play around with it. Have fun with it. There's always the undo button. You can get creative. Uh, turn your text one way. Add a picture, especially if you're using real-life players. Do, do what I did here. I'm going to zoom in again. Do this little cutesy trick with the, the circle card over the corner of the picture. Whatever it is you want to do, you can do, and you should be fine. And uh, there should be no, uh, nothing you can't do. There are preferences and setups and other things that you'd have to play with and, and learn. But if you can keep to the basics and learn the basics and, and master them, later on you can go in and play around and see what happens if I do X or if I do Y or if I do Z. Um, and then, of course, there's tutorials that are available at the Affinity website if you like and there's always the ability to come on the line and ask some questions and see if you can get some answers but that is our set of three training videos for affinity publisher for use with history maker baseball and you can take this uh even further and go to you know, making roller rumble cards you can make golfer cards for history maker golf you can you can make cards for just about anything you want and one last thing before i go i do i do want to show this i created this uh, these assets uh, for another page and it goes to show that the assets are always available to you once you create them they're available in a library that you can use at any time and these are ones i created that are monochromatic 
and allows me to create uh, whatever card I want by just dragging the elements in. So, for example, I've got the player name, and the first thing I better do is uh, get back the guides, get back the grid, show the margins, have everything so I can put this stuff. So I got the player name. What if I put the player name down here at the bottom? Well, let's try that. And then let's say that, uh, oh, we want to go and put that there, and we want to put that over here, and we want to say that he's a right-handed batter and a right-handed pitcher, and that he's a right-handed pitcher for this particular team. Let's move this down from the edge of the card. Notice I'm just using the assets and dropping them in. And I got that team. Let's say I've got uh, stat line for uh, let's put the stat line for a batter up here for a second while we get the pitching stat line down here. And uh, position, we're going to put right there. Then we're going to move the batting and pitching attributes right there. And notice they're gray. Well, I made a gray version. I made a white version. There's the white version. There's the gray version. The gray version would be my way of saying these are limited use cards rather than use a star. The gray are, are limited use cards. Well, he's a pitcher. So we're going to take, we're finding that we don't have room for it, so we're going to remove that. Um, and actually, because I added it to the asset, it's in there twice, so I'm going to delete this one. You just want to delete the asset. I didn't. Um, also need, uh, oh, what do we need? Uh, we need, uh, oh, where are they? Oh, we need the, uh, Got to go to my layers. Hang on a second. Need to get the uh, player batting stats out of there because he's a pitcher. Delete that because I'm going to need to go back to my assets and say that I need this little dude here to get dropped in between there. And then we look and say, do we like that card? I think it's a, a different way of doing it and by using this I can replace the image right away and say that I want this to be um, Firebirds which is the Phoenix Firebirds I've got the slider bar here that's it little just below the 2BSS that little thing S slide that down and there's that and that's what my that's what my card is going to be and then what I can do with my layers is I really would normally put these in the proper order, but let me do this first. Let me highlight, and you can see they all light up, and I'm going to hold the shift key down. There's the, there's the uh, attributes, position, pitching stats, team logo, right-handed, right-handed, bats, pitches, card header, and I'm going to group those. I'm going to just do a, a right click and group. And I'm going to call this um, Phoenix Pitching Card because it has the Phoenix logo in it. And then I can go inside this group. And after I Then I can go in and say I want the header to be up here. Oh no, I want the header to be down at the bottom, which is where it was. I want the ERA, where's the pitching stats? Pitching stats to be down here. Remember that to make that blue line. I'll put it in the pitching frame. I need it to be. Let's put them back.
need it to be above the card header. Need it to be right there. Um, I need the uh, fielding to be down here. And it, it's it's funky. I, I we'll just leave it at that. Um, I I think I what I did is by grouping it, I made it impossible to have everything else. You have to do it. Have to get it in right order first, and then group it. So anyway, that was the purpose of doing this. Um, I, I didn't I, rather than go back and change it and add to the length of the video. That's what you can do, and you can do that all by re by creating everything. And what I've done over here is I have a batter card. And a picture card so I can take this picture card and I can drag it over here and it's the old version that I created and there we go then I just fill in all of the things that I need to fill in and change that around for each card and it is time-consuming because there's no way to data to pull to pull the data into the system you have to hand type all of this stuff manually so the more data points you have the more typing you're gonna have to do but that's just the nature of the beast. You then change the logos, the colors, the names, and such, and you are good to go. So thank you for watching all three of these videos, and hopefully will be a chance to do something else in the future. But until then, thank you for watching, and so long, everybody.